He looked beyond all of my faults and he saw my needs. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the How marvelous that grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond all of my faults and he saw my needs and great is thy faithfulness oh great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed your righteous hand has provided Good evening. Now, on behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Mark Fernando Williams Sr., myself, I'd like to welcome you to the Word of Macedonia Baptist Church of the North Side here in the beautiful city of Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you for taking time out to worship with us in our Wednesday evening teaching and worship experience. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the blessing of another day. Thank you, God, for allowing us to see the sunrise and the sunset of this day that you've made. And God, we pray that you get glory out of our lives as we walk throughout the day. God, we pray that you will now saturate us with your spirit, that your word will go fresh, and that your word will fall fresh, and you will accomplish what you have set forward to do, God. We pray that you take charge, control, and mouth, mind, and motives, so miracles can be manifest in the midst of your people. We pray, God, that you will save, heal, and deliver. God, we pray that you touch the lives of all that will watch this and listen to this, that your spirit will just touch them in a special way. We thank you, God, for the great Macedonia Baptist Church. We thank you for our church collectively. And each member individually we pray that you will bless our church and our members with the blessings we see they stand in here. Thank you, God, for our senior pastor, Dr. Wade. We pray you continue to strengthen his body, continue to give him vision and insight, continue to guide and direct him as he takes us to higher heights and deeper depths in you. Now, God, as we come this evening to study your word, we pray that you open up our ears so we can hear what the Spirit is speaking, because your words so that those out of here hear what the Spirit is speaking. So now, God, speak to us through your Spirit. Speak through us. Speak to us now, Holy Spirit. Have your way with us and have your way in us so you can give glory, honor, and praise to our lives. Save now, heal now, deliver now. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible declares that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. So we thank you again for taking time out of your schedule to worship with us virtually, virtually here at the Greater Macedonia Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. As we continue our series of teachings from the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. So this evening, we want to deal with that segment of the fruit of the Spirit that is labeled gentleness. We're going to deal with gentleness tonight. And for our sermonic moment, our teaching text will come from the Gospel recorded by Matthew, Matthew chapter number 19. We'll look at verses 13 through 15. The Gospel recorded by Matthew, Matthew was Levi, who was a tax collector when Jesus called him from the seat of customs and told him to follow him. Matthew chapter 19, beginning in verses 13 through 15, the first book in the New Testament portion of the Bible. The King James Version of the Bible reports like this. Then were they brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them, and they departed thence. As we deal with gentleness on this evening, as we deal with gentleness on this evening, the first thing we see about gentleness in verse number 13, it shows that we, it shows we're, we're attracted to our Savior. It makes, a, makes us attracted to our Savior in verse number 13. But then, 
in verse number 14, it gives us access to our Savior, access to our Savior, attracted to our Savior in verse 13, access to our Savior in verse 14, but then in verse 15, when we deal with gentleness, it shows the acceptance from our Savior, the acceptance from our Savior, attracted the access and the acceptance. The first three segments, I said before, dealt with the emotions, love, joy, peace, great emotional segments of the fruit of the Spirit. Now, as we move to the move from the emotional to the evidential segments, these next three pieces provide next three segments provide visible proof of some great work of God that has been wrought in the life of the believer's heart. The second of these three evidential pieces is gentleness or kindness. Gentleness cares for the cares for the feelings of others and feels with them. Gentleness cares for the feelings of others and feels with them. It shows care and gets right in the situation with the person. Gentleness suffers with those who suffer, struggle with those who struggle, and work with those who work. Now we all have moments when we are not as gentle or as kind as we ought to be. But the testimony of others about us should still be that we are kind and gentle people. See, as believers, we should not be known as mean or nasty. This is a contradiction to the spirit of God and to the word of God. The word says we ought to be kind one to another. Kind and gentle, even when folk are not kind and gentle towards us. Catch this now. If we have the spirit of God, our spirit will come into contact with other spirits that are not of God. So what do you do when you come in contact with that nasty, mean person at church that has not shown any visible proof of a spiritual change in life? Glad you asked. We all still must be kind and gentle towards them. I know some of the meanest folks you can meet are in church, but my brothers and my sisters, we have to be filled with the spirit. It must be examples of the gentleness and the kindness of the master. See, to say, to see, to say we are children of the most high God and not have tangible proof through our lives make us nothing but sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. God requires more than just lip service about our salvation. He's looking for a living service. We got to live what we say. Matter of fact, brothers and sisters, the world does not care how much we say we go to church, but the world is looking to see how, how the church, God, how, how church has changed us through God, through his spirit. And we all must learn to deal with people with a gentle and kind attitude. I, I heard one day you can get more, more bees with honey can you? And then you can with vinegar. You, we have to have kind and gentle attitude. We have to. We, we have to, to. We cannot be too rough or too bra brazen when dealing with people. We got to show kindness and gentleness. So God set this message up for us this evening, so we can come and live with gentleness and kindness. And the best example of gentleness and kindness He shows right now through Jesus Christ. Our example in every segment of the fruit of the Spirit can be found in Jesus Christ. Look what it shows in verse number 13. It shows that the gentleness shows, it shows that people will be attracted to our Savior. People will be attracted to our Savior. The way we handle other folk is a witness to Jesus Christ. The way we deal with folk, the way we talk to folk, the way we come off on folk is a witness. And either we're going to attract them to our Savior or we're going to push them away from our Savior. Look at the text here. Then were, then were there brought unto him little children, and he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. The parents were so drawn to Jesus that they wanted his blessings on their children. They believed Jesus could help their young children. These parents cared for their children so much so that they wanted the best that they could get. Understand how Jesus was claiming to be the Messiah, the very Son of God. So they wanted their children to be blessed by him instead of an ordinary religious leader. They, 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 they believed in Jesus' love and his power to bestow blessings. And my brothers and my sisters, if Jesus shows gentleness in his love and his power when he demonstrates it in our lives, that they also believed that he would bless them. That their concern for their children was strong and persistent. They brought their children to Jesus. To
despite strong religious opposition and despite the disciples' public rebuke. You got to remember now, hanging out with Jesus didn't make you popular. Coming to Jesus didn't put you in the end crowd. The religious leaders of that day was opposed to what Jesus was teaching and preaching. He was, they were opposed to what Jesus was doing. But even when they come to Jesus, his disciples were rebuked and they would not be de deterred by the disciples. We must understand that as parents, we are just trustees of God's property. We are to care enough to trust God's power and blessings for our children. And parents, do not let anyone or anything stop you from bringing your child to Christ. Don't let nobody stop you from Give your child to Jesus Christ. The disciples thought they knew the mind of Christ. Just like people think they know the mind of other folk. But but that that, that but that there that that, that, that that you can't understand the mind of Christ because the mind of Christ is so different from the mind of man. But they, they did not know the mind of Christ. Don't, don't you remember after a long day of teaching? It was not it was now late enough that the food was gone and it was five thousand men, not counting women and children. What did the disciples want to do? Send them away. My brothers and my sisters, the disciples had a send you away ministry. As my brothers and my sisters, we have to be careful about sending folk away when they're hurting and helpless in their situation. The Bible says, be careful because we never know when we're entertaining angels unaware. That's why we got to be gentle because we never know when God is sending an angel that to just show so we can show God that we're growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. We must be careful and cautious about placing labels on the importance of people. God loves everyone and cares about everyone. So should we. These disciples think Jesus too important to pray for kids. And even today we invalidate what kids are doing. Adults Talk you Sunday schools to adult talk you Sundays take you Sundays off because it's just the kids. We we don't need to come. The kids are just doing something. Well, baby, the kids are just as important as you and I. He just said in the beginning of chapter 18, we must all come as little children. But the disciple was doing what a lot of us do and looking, but we weren't listening. I say that again. We were doing, we do do this a lot of time. We're looking, but we're not listening. We 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 you hear we have a gentle and kind. Christ, but he is surrounded by guards and knights. Matthew says they rebuked them. They gave them harsh words. Can't you see a mother saying, I don't care what they say, they not Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, until Christ says so, don't let nobody tell you what Christ can and cannot do for your child. Because of his gentleness, because of his kindness, folk was attracted to the Savior. But because he's gentle, because he's kind, in verse 14 he shows he gives access to our Savior. We get access to our Savior. God allows us access into the very presence of the Lord. That should shout somebody this evening because even in the midst of our trouble, our trials, and our turbulence, we have access to the Savior. We have access to the one who can bring us out, who can keep us in the midst of it, who can bring us out on the other side. Look what the Bible says in verse 14. But Jesus said unto them, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Christ understood that children are just as valuable as adults. Christ knew that in order to gain kingdom access, everyone has to come like a child. Children are eager to learn and eager to follow. So we are to gain access to the kingdom of God. We got to come like a child. When the question was asked about the greatness in the kingdom, Jesus got a little child. Jesus tells his disciples, don't block the children out. That, 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 that is what gentleness and kindness does. It gives access to those who have been blocked out. Oh, somebody missed their shout. Blocked out by riches, blocked out by better paying jobs, blocked out by country club living, blocked out by better health care, blocked out by a new car, blocked out for promotion, even blocked out some churches. But the good news is and the shout news is that Jesus does not care what you've been blocked out from. He won't give you access to his father's kingdom. And his father's kingdom is rich in houses and land. And he holds the wealth of the world and the palm of him. When you're a child of the king of kings, you have access to all the father has. Somebody said, what does the father has? Well, that's good. The Bible tells me over in Psalms 24 that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world that they that dwell therein. Everything you see belongs to the father. But what kind of kingdom is it you like? It's a kingdom where the last shall be first. 
is a kingdom where eviction and foreclosure is missing. It is a kingdom where Job said, the wicked shall see some trouble and the weary shall be in rest. It's a kingdom where John on the Isle of Patmos said, there's no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. It's a place where my grandfather would say, it's always howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. Hey, it, 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 it's a kingdom where it's always a good day. That, that's what why we can't judge who, we, who may be attracted to Christ. It is too much at stake. The kingdom is at stake. And there's not anyone who, who's too small or too big for his kingdom. The old saints used to say, I got a new home over in Zion. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Anybody know about that new kingdom? My, my access to the kingdom comes from my access to my sake. Because I have access to the Savior. I now have access to the kingdom. Story. So about two little kids. One little kid was of uh, affluent life, the other was uh, a poor life. The affluent kid one day was talking to the poor kid and he was telling the kid, he said, you see that house on that hill? That's my daddy's house. He, he said, you see that helicopter by the land? That's my daddy's helicopter. And while they was talking, they could see a boat coming down the river. He said, you see that boat in the water? That's my daddy's boat. The, the kid who was poor looked at the kid who was affluent and rich and said, that's all right. You see the hill that the house is on? That's my daddy's hill. You see the sky that the helicopter's flying in? That's my daddy's sky. You see the water that the boat is going down? That's my daddy's water because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And I'm a child of the king. So we are attracted to our Savior. Gentleness brings attraction, but gentleness also gives us access to our Savior. My last and finally, as we sign off for this evening, not only does, are we attracted to our Savior, not only gives access to our Savior, but we have the acceptance from our Savior. Verse number 15, we have the acceptance from our Savior. Look what the text says. And he laid his hands on them and departed. Then Jesus touched the children. He went ahead and blessed the children. He touched them not because they wanted to be touched, but because they had parents that wanted them to. I know there's somebody watching this evening. You can testify. You, you had to deal with some things with your children, but you put them in the hands of the Lord because you understand if the Lord touched them, everything would be all right. I know I got a few witnesses today that are that, that not too mean and not too ashamed to testify that if you if you just bring it to Jesus, if you just bring your child to Jesus, bring the situation to Jesus, bring the circumstances to Jesus, he can make everything all right. You, you wouldn't be here today if it wasn't because the Lord touched you. A praying grandparent, a spirit-filled aunt or uncle, a mother or a father, a sister or brother, a husband or wife, that, that every time there was a time of prayer, they went down with you in their heart. You had intercessors, all right, and the truth be told, if we're honest, we had folk was interceding for us that we didn't even know was interceding for us. I thank God for the prayers of the saints. This is a great truth that is often overlooked. It is not so much that we come and touch God as it is he comes and touches us. Anybody glad that you, you, you didn't have to worry about touching God, that God reached way down and touched you? He touched somebody in a crack house. He touched somebody in a whorehouse. He touched somebody at a gambling table. He touched you. He touched you while you was lying. He touched you while you were still. He touched you while you had no good way. He touched you when you was drunk. He touched you while you was running the streets. He touched you while you were sleeping. Right. He touched you while you were smoking. Somebody listen, somebody watching. You know the Lord touched you. He showed his gentleness. He showed his kindness in the midst of even your wrong and your trifling situation. I, I don't know any of those any, any, any of those things, but uh, you should be glad. You should be glad today that he touched you, even in your pious life and your saved life. So I, I can testify for myself. He touched me. Something happened, and now I know he touched me, and now I'm able. He he touched me. Oh yeah, he touched me. He didn't. He, did he touch anybody watching? Aren't you glad that he's gentle and kind when he should have been rough and tough with us? He touched us gently and in kindness and made us whole again. I'm glad that even that the Lord came down and touched me. He showed his gentleness. He showed his kindness. That while I was a wretch undone, wasn't fit to live and too scared to die, he showed gentleness and compassion and kindness towards me by saving me, by pick, picking me up out of the buck and the mire, placing my feet on a solid foundation, giving me a new start at life, a new opportunity at life. And behold, I'm a new creature. The Bible says old things are passed away. And behold, all 
things are made new. I've been picked up and changed for his glory, his honor, and his praise. We are living examples of the gentleness, of the kindness of Jesus Christ. Because none of us deserve what we have, but because of his gentleness, because of his kindness, because he looked beyond our faults and saw our needs, we are blessed. The Bible says in the city, blessed in the field, blessed as we come, and blessed as we go. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If you're watching this evening, you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. Salvation is simple as ABC, accept, believe, and confess. You can receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Just confess your mouth to the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Paul says in Romans chapter number 10, and you shall be saved. You can be saved right here and right now. Just accept him as your personal Savior. If you're already saved, but you're not united with the local church, the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews chapter 10, don't forsake assembling yourselves together. There is strength in the corporate worship, in the corporate worship of believers. There is strength as we gather corporately, virtually, and in person. Last, if you're a backside, you love the church for some reason. Jeremiah chapter 3 says he's in love with the backside. So much so that he's married to the backside. In Revelation, I stand at the door of your heart knocking. If you open up, I'll come in and I'll suck with you. If you made any of those three decisions, if you gave your life to Jesus Christ, and you want to come back and become a part of a Bible teaching, Bible believing church, or if you want to come back and write a relationship with God the Father, reach out to us through our DM or contact our church office so we can help you grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Again, on Sundays at 9 a.m., we have Sunday school, in-person Sunday school here in the sanctuary with social distancing. Masks are required. Temperature checks are still required. As you come into the sanctuary, we have social distancing seating. And at 10 a.m., we have our morning worship service. You can do it in person, or you can watch us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, watch us on, uh, listen to us on Zoom, or watch us on Instagram, and you can become a, and you can be a part of the morning worship experience. And as we sign off, I want to again, on behalf of our senior pastor, thank you for taking time out to worship with us on this evening. The benediction. Now Jim was able to keep us from falling, be able to present us faultless for his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God our Savior, be their majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and keep you is our prayer.